Greetings, greetings, and welcome to a Monday episode of Vagram's Chance Season 3. Uh, we did have some brief <laughs> thunderstorms, but I think they were artificial. I think it was a Dark Preacher messing with forces he probably shouldn't. Um, I am back here at the observatory. We've been, we've had kind of a, a week off because of some performance issues. Now, uh, what I can actually show you. Oh, let me do an, Let me do a new one. Boom, there we go. Uh, right here. Uh, overworld, 20 TPS, less than 20 milliseconds. That is actually very, very good. Um, when TPS is ticks per second, I believe, and when a server's, uh, when one when part of the server starts performance starts suffering, you'll see like the overworld's tick rate. Like let's say there's a build specifically in the overworld, or okay, let's say actually somebody has some wacky contraption that they have built in the nether you'll see the nether's tick rate, specifically for that dimension, will start going down. It will go from 20 to 19 to 18 to 17, depending on how bad this device may be. And the lower the tick rate, the worse the performance will be. That's when you start seeing, like, you'll break a block, and then it will come back real quick, um, what's called block popping. Uh, that is one of the most common symptoms that you can actually see of lower TPS. The server is literally struggling to keep up with you. Now... Another symptom um, is that you'll see the response time will go up and up and up. It'll go from 20 milliseconds to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80. It'll shoot up to like 300. When we were... That's Dark Preacher. I am almost 100% positive. Let's see if he did what he did last time. The lightning last time was immediately followed by Preacher died. <laughs> anyway, um... Uh, so that's one of the problems we were actually having last time, uh, last week, is we had a TPS of like three for the overworld and a response time of 300 milliseconds. That was really bad. Really, really bad. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, it's Liquid Ender, Energized Glowstone. So yeah, um, that's one of those things that was kind of weird. Uh, we don't uh, know what really caused it because it was apparently a problem in code that was pre-existing for quite a while. Um, it was a bug in some microblock code somewhere. So basically, a whole bunch of chunks were being loaded at the same time, or were being loaded two and three and four times. And they weren't supposed to. So you get a chunk that's only supposed to be loaded one time. Like, let's say the chunk that I'm in right now, I think this is a chunk right here, about the middle of it. Um, let's say that this is a chunk I'm standing in right now. How close to right am I? Hey, I'm actually pretty close to right, middle of a chunk. So in this chunk, it should, if it's going to be loaded, it should only be loaded one time, either by something that is doing chunk loading specifically or a block that is loading the chunk so that it can, can keep completing some task. The best example of this is like the digital miner from Mechanism or the quarry from Buildcraft. They will load the chunk they're in as well as the chunk they're working in. So those things will load chunks. Now, sometimes they will, they should check to see if the chunk is already loaded or being kept loaded. Okay. So even if I have a quarry and a chunk loader in the same chunk, only one of those is going to take precedence and load the chunk. What we were having is an occasion where we had lists of chunks around the map that were basically being loaded three, four, even five times. And it was uh, some bug in some old 1710 code that a lot of people don't use anymore, and, but it's for a mod that a lot of people support. So, um, one of my friends in Forgecraft, a genius by the name of Vot or Tog, I actually don't know what name he goes by because his Minecraft in-game name is different from his identity everywhere else. But um, Tog, T-A-H-G, is a absolute genius and found the problem. Now, uh, if he's, I don't know if he watches this series, but um, I have taken one last snapshot this morning of memory to make sure that he can uh, get him to analyze it one last time to make sure we have solved the problem, make sure everything is kosher, everything's copacetic. Uh, so parts of, like, I, I have this hooked back up to the LP system, but, like, if you notice, if we go down here, 
Big chunks. Pretty much all the other remote terminals are disconnected. I've decided that I'm going to go back to using these. I know these were 100%. These are rather, ender chests are rather inert. They're rather inactive, basically. They don't really do anything unless you interact with them or unless something else interacts with them. Um, the, the, my, the dimensional transceivers from Ender IO, I have never tested those before to see what kind of impact they have on a server, on an LP system. They might have been putting undue stress on the server. I'm not sure. So I decided to disconnect them because the dimensional transceiver is not innately inert. It, it is constantly doing and checking and seeing and whatever. Um, this is not, it's not inert. That's not true. It's a tile entity. It, it does things, but it is um, less active about how it does them. So I'm going to just be switching to, since I can slap a diamond on each one of these and make it unique to me, this is my network. This is my black, black, red ender chest. So if somebody else makes a black, black, red ender chest without a diamond, it's going to have different contents. If they put the diamond on it, it's going to have different, different contents because it's going to be unique to them. So I can use whatever color combinations I want to on an ender chest as long as I put a diamond on it. That makes it my own ender chest network, quote unquote. So I can use any color combination. I'm going to use black, black, and then whatever. That will limit me to, I think, 16 possible maximum extensions. I think that's a good maximum to have. It is a good artificial limit to have right now. I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five being added. Plus, I've got these two that are for different purposes. So, yeah, um, that's what I'm going to do to artificially limit myself on how many maximum remote connections I can have to my LP network. That's how I'm going to do it. Everything else seems to be okay. Oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I don't need to be seeing this. I disconnected that tree farm. When we started having problems with the server, that's one of the first things I took down. I disconnected the tree farm. We are fairly well stocked up. I mean, if you look right here, I have... An absurd amount of salix wood. I've got, oh gosh, birch saplings, sedrum saplings, delnas saplings, salix saplings. We've got lots of vines, actually, which was a pleasant surprise. Um, acacia saplings, jungle saplings. I've got uh, porpor wood, which is actually, uh, no, porpor saplings, I'm sorry. Oak saplings, sedrum wood, porpor wood. Uh, porpor wood is very interesting looking stuff. Um, delnas wood. Actually, that's a bad way to show that off. Let me do that. Um, Salix wood. Very cool looking. I actually kind of like Salix, despite the fact that uh, the tree is a pain in the butt. Um, and uh, let's get a nice variety. We've got a big, a pretty big stock up on a lot of those things. Um, lots of saplings, lots of, you know, whatever. A whole bunch of the other stuff, like apples, came over here from all the oak trees. So, yeah. Anyway, I'll clean that up later. <laughs> um, let's go over here. Uh, real quick, I decided to do some experimentation with some of the thermal foundation, thermal dynamic stuff. I have some liquid Zephyrian erothium. <laughs> Say that five times fast. What I want to do is mess with these little doodads called viaducts. Why do I want to do that? Well, why not? I thought. Um, I think they could be really clever to actually have run around here on um, parts of the observatory. Originally, I had the idea before we had the TARDIS mod in the actual pack, I had the idea of using um, viaducts as an elevator system. I thought that would have been cooler. But um, we got the uh, gravity lifts and the TARDIS mod, and it kind of changes quite a bit. There's a something very, very effortless about floating up, floating down. But I, I thought it'd be neat to mess with some of those things. So, um, Electrum, in the corners, you get some abused quartz or whatever other kind of hardened quartz glass. And just going to make a whole bunch of these. Now, I need to actually, I probably do not have enough, but you have to make this stuff called Zephyrian Erothium. What that is, is melted Erothium dust. Now, erothium dust is blitz powder, either nitor or saltpeter, nitor and salt or saltpeter, one of the two, uh, redstone and sand. You get all four of those and combine them and it makes erothium dust, right? Blitz powder is actually easy to make. It's basically sand plus redstone. That's it, sand and liquid redstone. So you can actually make all of those pretty easily. All the way up to erothium dust in our pack even actually has a. Boop. 
EMC value. So I can get this and just start melting that stuff down. And that will go up and up and up and up. And we can get these and we can infuse them. Now there's different kinds of these viaducts. If you look at this and you hold down shift, it says transfers players. Whoosh, that's it. Then there are long range viaducts. These are high speed. Um, these are basically, it's copper and quartz glass. That's it. Those are cheaper to make and you can use them as in between points. The problem is if you use these, fast transport between two specific locations and then there is the actual long range linking viaducts. These are the end points. So you have to actually put these in between these and these, right? This is kind of an interface between the cheap pipes and the nice pipes. Um, so if we get a viaduct and we infuse it with resonant ender, okay, that's interesting. That is really cool. I like that system. Um, oh, it finished all of them. What? And we still have extra. Okay, I'm going to have to make more of those things. I think those things could be really, really cool. Um, let's just do... Yep, that's actually just fine. I would like to request one of those. Because we are... Oop. Of course, a, a very diverse and uh, mixed pack mod pack so we actually have emc values on lots of things um i want to actually make but uh, yeah it's actually guessing pretty good right now i'm gonna do i'm missing 40 copper ingots really okay well that is gonna be a lot of copper i guess i'm just gonna get this and send it off into the mesosphere it's going to get sorted into the system. Remember, this is actually uh, being pulled from the chest downstairs. So it's being sorted from that chest downstairs. Uh, let's see. Where did those copper ingots go? Yeah, they're somewhere. Oh, I know what it is. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. It's an issue of... Not the right kind of quartz. I I mean, uh, copper. I had all the right kind of copper. I didn't hit the most likely button. That most likely button is actually a new addition to our version of uh, logistics pipes. So if you hit get the recipe for something and you hit shift and then the question mark, left click the question mark, you get this screen previously, select or dict type. Well, now we have a most likely button. It will look to your system and guess what specific kind of copper ingot do you have? It's saying thermal foundations, what we've got on hand, let's use those. And then fused quartz, you've got a lot of that on hand, let's use that, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, um, I think that's actually a very cool addition. I'm very happy about that. Now, what I'm gonna actually have to do is get some, I need another tank. Let's get rid of that. What do I have on tap for tanks? Resonant portable tank. Perfect. Whoa, let's not get over eager there. I'm going to. Okay, I got to remember. There we go. We have a whole bunch of. Then we're going to have to let this fill up again. And then I think both machines should actually be empty. And we have, it doesn't show up as anything. It's a little disappointing. We have 19 buckets of uh, um, Zephyrium Erothium. Ooh, say that a few times fast. I'm going to actually get this and just park it right there for the time being. I'm going to get some Ender Pearls and we're going to do this a little bit at a time. I'm just going to get one stack since that's only 16. Let's do... That, I think that's a bucket, I think. I'm not sure. Okay, so that's one bucket. So if I'm going to have to have two ends, then I'm going to have to have 
two sets of those. We get one of those, and we're going to infuse it. Boop, boop. Let's get these on the bar in the right order. Wow, this is going to take a little bit. We have two buckets in here. I'm hoping this will be two shots worth. But um, I thought it'd be fun to run a length of this under the flooring to the tech tower, maybe, or somewhere like that. I've got a lot of actual piping space hidden in the bridges that cross connect the, the central tower to the outer towers. And I thought it could be kind of fun to have some of these pipes whizzing around the base, you know? There's one of those things. This one's going to infuse. So basically, let's see. If we... Okay, I got to think about this. I've got a section of LP pipes cutting right across there. And now that I think about it, I'm actually going to break that link because it comes, it comes from that machine right there under the flooring all the way down here, and it connects to this. I'm going to make a separate re remote connection for that so I can actually break that, which means... We could, oh, let's see, let's go exploring. We got power right there. I'm trying to think of where I want to put this. We've got power in a lot of places, actually. Okay, well, let's just go down here and think about it this way. Why do I have a power loop over here? Did I used to have something hooked up here? Weird. There's one of my Magnum torches. <gasps> I'm actually going to get you. And move you over there. Put you in the corner. A couple blocks over will not make a ding dang difference. And now I'm going to do the ugly thing. And dig all these things up. Yay. Ah. Ah. Oh, this is supposed to have... Oh, wow. Okay, that's unsightly of me. Hang on a sec. Can I request... Oh, has my request pipe been broken? I think it has. Hang on a sec. Dun -dun 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 yep, request pipe. Okay. Let's get this thing hooked back up again. Remote orderer. R -r 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 -r. I'm going to need one of these. Oh, no, actually, I just go that connected to pipe. Yay, there we go. Okay. I can now go back and request. Where's the lab blocks? Laboratory. I need one stack of those, please. Post haste, muy bueno. And there we go. Awesome. Okay, that that works again. Hey, this is supposed to be... Of course, now I've sealed myself out, but that is part of the... Ah, genius. Okay. Where do we want to spit this out? This is going to be, let's see, viaduct. We're going to do this. Okay, so that's an open point. I think configured. Yeah, so this is going to be named, um, wait a minute. Yeah, okay. Central West. There we go. No destinations. So we're going to do a long range linking. Then we do a whole bunch of these. Pop. 
These are the cheaper ones, let you go farther distances. I really don't need to light under the floors because I have a magnum torch right over there, but it's one of those things that you do as a builder that is just kind of like an instinctual, okay, I'm actually gonna spit it out right here, which means Oh, my other linking thing. I didn't pick it up. Whoops. I was like, where did it go? Where did it go? It should be right there. Okay. So we do this here. Then a normal. Over here. Then we can actually do configure tech tower. Okay, which means now, if we put the flooring back, what happens? I could see myself totally rewiring my entire base just so I could use these things. Oops. I think I put a block down where I wasn't supposed to. Okay, so now, let's go to the tech tower. Yo, oh, it builds up speed. Ooh, okay. So you get in here and then it's like charging, you see that? 120% zoom. Okay, so that's because we're using the high speed piping which I think is why. So if we wanted to, we could switch these out to normal viaduct, and I think it would basically be, let me I'm, I'm curious what happens when I try. I shouldn't have even put the flooring down to be honest. I think I'll have enough of these things. We'll see. So yeah, the charge up is basically for those high speed piping. That's what that junction point does. Is it when you go from a normal viaduct to a junction point like that. It. Whoop, charges you up to full speed and you go whipping down those long distance pipes. So now, mm -mm 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 -mm. let's see, if I right click tech tower, yep, it just goes seamlessly, and then we pop out right there. Central West, and see, I could have these things routed through different means. Now my big question is, do these things work through Tesseracts? Can I plug Tesseracts into these Bad boys. There we go. Weird. Um, and uh, actually teleport people through them. That's that. That's something that I'm curious about. I'm not going to do that today. But I think it's worthy of exploration. Oh, that is so neat. I could get used to that all day. Yeah, see, and I could actually see routing these things down one floor through I could see poking a hole down into the warehouse and having these things being routed as a central junction point through the warehouse ceiling. So you go passing through the warehouse going out to other places. I I, I think that's a that's a thing. I think it should be a thing. If it's not a thing, I want to make it a thing. Let's go down here. See, I, I could basically, if we go, well, no, 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 don't fail on me now. Yeah, see, it's right there. The only thing I would have to contend with is basically moving this power line over back behind me, and I've got one block spare, I could do that. So I could basically get this power line, move it to the other side, 
and then I could pull this straight over here down, and then we could have it come across the ceiling right here, poke back up here, where there would be a point for the uh, central tower east, and then another connecting point way off to the magic tower. So you could just junction all the way. Oh yeah, I gotta make more of these things. I gotta make more, gotta make more, gotta make more. I'm actually going to do there so it's consistent and it's gonna be awesome. Okay, yeah, I see possibility with this, definite possibility. I wanna make more of these viaduct thingies because they're not really expensive in the grand scheme of things. At least I don't think they are. Um, it, but I, I definitely want to make more. I don't know if I want to do the long range linking. I think I might do the long range because then it would be a quicker trip all the way across the tower. Yeah, that could be fun. Okay, I've got ideas. I'm going to actually get on that. And uh maybe my wednesday's episode we can have something fun concocted i don't know i will catch you folks later have a good one bye, -bye.